Today we're going to be making Antonio Carluccio's version of meatloaf, which is meatloaf with tomato sauce, which is actually not made in an oven. And it's from Antonio's cookbook, An Invitation to Italian Cooking. So let's get started. Okay, so we are going to start by adding our ground beef um, into our mixing bowl there. Okay, and this is what, what two pounds? That is 2.25 pounds, or one kilogram. So we're going to add that to the mixing bowl. Yep, so then we're just going to mix the remaining ingredients together. So we're going to go with our breadcrumbs. Okay, put that on top before we... And okay. that is 6 ounces or 175 grams of breadcrumbs made from stale bread. Um, next we are going to add some finely chopped parsley. Okay, which we have right here. So we're going to add that. And that is 2 tablespoons of parsley that has been finely chopped. Okay, then to this we're going to add... We're going to add 2 ounces of ground Parmesan cheese or 55 grams. Okay, so add that to our mixture and then salt and pepper, and then we're just going to mix it all up. So go ahead and add some salt. Antonio does suggest um, that once your mixture is done, just to fry up a little piece of the meat so you can check it for seasoning, because it's obviously not recommended to taste uncooked meat. Okay, so there is that. So again, the beauty of this meatloaf is that you actually don't need an oven to make it. So if you are camping or you've lost power and you want to cook on a gas burner, um, you're in luck, you can make this. Okay, we have our ingredients and our beef all mixed together. So we're going to go ahead and whisk some eggs. And we'll go ahead and add that right to the meat. Okay. And then we'll just go ahead and mix that in, right? Yeah, just go ahead. You can use your hands if they're clean or use a spoon if that's easier for you. So we're just going to go ahead and mix it together and then shape it into a nice oval loaf. Okay, and then at this point you just kind of want to judge and see if, if the meatloaf will hold together when you shape it into a loaf. And if it's not holding together, you can go ahead and add some more breadcrumbs. Alright, so we're going to go ahead, now that we have our Dutch oven out, Ready to heat up, we're going to add some extra virgin olive oil to the pan here. We're going to shallow fry it, so add a generous amount. And then we are going to fry up just a little piece of the meatloaf first so we can test it for seasoning. And give it a little quick taste to see if we like the seasoning or if we need to add a little bit. Um, just kind of, kind of test it out a little bit. Okay, we've got a nice sizzle going on there. Okay. And now we're just going to brown the meatloaf on all sides to seal in the ju juices and make it look appetizing. As good as we can. Yep. Okay, so we're just flipping that very gently to make sure it doesn't burn. Uh, I mean, make sure it doesn't break. And it didn't. I was able to flip it. We got a nice little crust on the top. It's looking good so far. If you like meatloaf. Okay, we have a nice crust on all sides of our meatloaf, so we're going to go ahead and set that aside while we make the sauce. Alrighty, next step. Okay, so the next step is Antonio says to make the tomato sauce in the usual way. Um, this recipe actually doesn't tell you how to make the tomato sauce, but fortunately we've made one before. So we're going to go ahead, grab a skillet, and we're going to add a little bit of olive oil into the skillet. If you don't like olive oil, Antonio's cookbook may not be for you. <laughs> well, I guess you probably could use vegetable oil, just you can, don't... You could use other oils, I know. If you don't know any Italians, don't tell them. <laughs> Although Antonio may turn over in his grave once or twice. So, <laughs> or so. So keep it to yourself. Yeah. Okay, so we're heating up the oil, and then to that we will be adding some finely chopped onion, and that is one onion that has been finely chopped. Ooh, the magical sound of the sizzle. And then we're going to fry the onion until that is soft but not brown. So you do want to keep your heat a little bit on the lower side so you don't burn it. Okay, it looks like our onions are doing great there, so we're going to go ahead and add our garlic. And that is one clove of garlic that has been finely yeah, chopped. Here. 
So add that to our onions and, and mix that in. And just fry that for a few minutes. And then next we are going to um, take our canned tomato. Two 800 gram cans or one and three quarter pounds of peeled plum tomatoes and begin to drain off just a little bit of the juice. Okay, according to the recipe, we're supposed to drain just a little bit of the liquid off from this. So we're going to go ahead and do that. There we go. Probably you think that's enough? Oh, let's see the can. Yeah, that's probably fine. Okay. I mean, they, they're pretty tightly packed in there. I, I imagine different brands will have different amounts of liquid. So we'll go ahead and do our second one, same procedure. We'll go ahead and just keep the tomatoes from coming out and drain some of that juice out. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. All right. All right, I'm going to set this out of my way, so this aside. So next we're going to um, empty our cans into a bowl. Go ahead and do that. And because those are whole tomatoes, we're just going to crush them by hand. Okay. So there we go. We're going to set the cans aside. And just go ahead and start to give these a little crush. Yeah, you just kind of want to squeeze them like you would a stress bowl. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's squishy. <laughs> Make some interesting noises. Okay, so now that we have that step done, we're going to go ahead and add our sauce, our tomato sauce, into our skillet with the onions and garlic. Okay, there we are. Set that aside. And if the tomato is still too chunky for you, um, you could use a potato masher or something to get a little bit finer. Um, but we're going to cook that through a little bit and then season it with salt and pepper. Okay, so we're going to add basil um, to our sauce now. Go ahead and tear that up in there. I believe it's 10 basil leaves. Yeah, so we're going to add that, give it a stir, and then that's going to be added to our meatloaf. And it is amazing what this basil will add to the sauce. You wouldn't think just a little leaf would, but it really, really does. Alrighty, now we have a little bit of oil drained off from our meatloaf. We're going to go ahead and add our sauce right to the pan. Mm-hmm. And it just pretty much covers it. Yep. So, we're going to turn the heat down to a light simmer. We'll put our lid back on. And then cook it for 30 minutes. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes or so, so we're going to go ahead and give it our first slip here, if we're able to. Oh, yeah. There we go. Flip that around our sauce and recover it. And let it go another 10 minutes. We're going to be shooting for an hour total. We're going to go ahead and re-add, or re-lit it. And there we go. Okay, we are at the 30 minute mark. It's been simmering for a good half an hour now. We're going to go ahead and remove the lid and leave that off to let our sauce thicken a little bit for the final half an hour. Uh, it looks good so far. I am going to go ahead and turn it over one more time. And uh, so far, so good. Okay, our next step, now that it's done, is we're going to let this rest for about 10 minutes. We're going to go ahead and remove it from the pot, set it aside, and let it do that. Okay, and then um, Antonio says that um, you can use the tomato sauce to serve with a nice pasta. We're going to serve ours with some mashed potatoes and vegetables, so we'll see you in a few minutes. Alrighty, the best way to do this is to dive right in, although I may have to plug my nose when I do. I do not like meatloaf, <laughs> but I've never had one quite like this before. Cheers. <laughs> you can do this. <laughs> mm. Well, I think it's really good. I'll have to be honest with you, I kind of like it. It's a... Uh... Mm. It's simple. Mm. It's delicious. I really like the tomato sauce for this. The tomato sauce is fantastic. The meatloaf itself is not anything that I've ever experienced because it's... um. I think it's the parmesan cheese in there. Yeah, it's totally different to any meatloaf that I've ever encountered. And this is something that I would actually eat. This coming from a person who hates meatloaf. And he really hates meatloaf. Won't touch it. <laughs> this I will eat and I will enjoy it. Thumbs up, Antonio. You did it. Okay, so until next time, we're saying goodbye. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to keep eating it. Enjoy.